Welcome to this episode of the Whole Health of Rob County podcast. This is a platform to connect with and share the stories of health professionals, personal development leaders, and entrepreneurs who are making an impact in the world. And on this episode, I'm joined by my friend Joel Cochran. Joel is the owner of Proclivity. He is a life coach, and Joel not only brings over 10 years of experience in the health and fitness field as a coach, but he also has a diverse background in leadership, consulting, life coaching, and business development, helping start and manage multiple small businesses and nonprofit organizations. As a graduate from the University of Nevada, Reno, Joel earned his bachelor's degree in communications with a minor in community health science. Joel credits his education for establishing the foundation of his coaching, which focuses on the words that we say and how it affects our health and life. Throughout his career, Joel has had a unique opportunity to personally interact with over 3,000 individuals as the manager of two of the largest functional fitness facilities in the U.S. This gave him valuable insight into the recru- into the recurring issues that people face in both their language and their health, which helped him create the techniques he now uses in his own life and his, in his program. Joel now works one-on-one with committed individuals to optimize any life goal from personal to professional by focusing on creating better language to create better outcomes. And here he says, I wouldn't trade what I'm doing for any other job in the world. Now, before we dive into this episode, if you're listening on your phone, I really encourage you to keep your phone off your body while you listen to this. Keep keep your technology away from you if you're listening on your laptop, wherever you're listening to this a wonderful podcast we're about to dive into. Keep the technology off you. You've often heard me talk about the negative effects of electromagnetic radiation, and the best thing we can do is distance ourselves and limit our exposure to it. So starting with that, we want to use safe use technology. And so that starts with keeping it off our body, especially if you're a guy, keep it out of your pocket, keep it away from your, your genitals as best you can. A lot of different studies coming out as to the negative effects of that. So we can still enjoy the wonderful benefits of technology, but not have the negative side effects. And so that's where I partnered with the company Aries Tech, which is a microprocessing company that utilizes technology to balance out the negative effects that these electromagnetic waves are having on ours on our system. So by using Aries technology, it is actually actually mitigating the negative effects associated with electromagnetic radiation. So they come in different forms of chips. You can put a little sticker uh, microprocessor on your phone, have a bigger one, I keep one by my Wi-Fi, keep it by my bedside. And that's been a great way to help reduce the negative effects of electromagnetic radiation, which can range from inflammation, stress, headaches, signs of dehydration as it is draining the body um, to use more energy to sustain itself. So a lot of different things we can dive into. If you haven't already checked out my podcast I did on electromagnetic radiation, do check that out. Um, that's going to give you a good feel as to what that is. But you can go to AriesTech.com and use the discount code WholeHealth to save you 10% off your Aries technology. And without further ado, with your phone away from you, with your laptop off your body, get ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this fantastic episode with Joel Cochran. All right, my brother, Joe Cochran. Welcome to the show, my friend. I'm excited to dive into a lot of fun topics today. Rob, we're going to have so much fun today, and uh, I really hope that your listeners uh, get some really quality stuff out of what we're going to dive into. Well, they most certainly will. And even just us chatting a little bit before, you know, the little preamble was uh, getting me excited. I actually had to stop you because I was like, you know, we got to save this for the episode because we're, <laughs> we're already diving deep in. We haven't even started yet. So, you know, when we first chatted, you know, a handful of weeks ago, whenever that was on Zoom, um, I remember you talked about something called the proclivity pyramid, which is uh, I loved how it was a very unique approach to health and overall well-being. So love to have you start by diving into what that is. And how you work that in with your clients? Yeah, man. So, uh, you know, after ten plus years being in the in the health and fitness field, and and doing everything that I can to to help people truly get to a healthier bodies and and happier lives, I started recognizing when I was looking at the people I've worked with thousands and thousands of people, um, I, I started realizing it, there's a reoccurring pattern here, right? And what I started thinking was, why don't I get to the root of this, right? What's the root cause? You know, I was telling you uh, before we started that, that I, I dated a doctor for an extended period of time. And, and uh, one of the things that she always told her students was find the root cause. What's the root cause? 
And that just, that just went in my head. And it, I, it just was rambling around. I was going, what is the root cause? How is it that we spend over $65 billion a year on diets, right? We spend over $25 billion on fitness, fitness regimens, gyms, memberships, yet 42% of the population are obese. 73% are overweight. Wait a second. If numbers continue to rise, both in the amount of money that the diet industry and the fitness industry are making, and in the numbers of obesity and, over, and, and people who are overweight, something's not working. So I went back and I went, you know, at being a CrossFit coach, right? They got the pyramid, right? In terms of, you know, your cardiovascular base and gymnastics and weightlifting, right? And I said, what is the pyramid of health right now in America? How do people vision it? So I started going through my head. I took myself and I put myself into the hell of the clients that I served. And this may resonate if you guys are listening right now with you. If I were to ask you, and obviously you guys are not going to answer because you're just listening to me. But if I was going to ask you, you're, you're not healthy right now. You're overweight, right? You're feeling sluggish, energy levels down, right? What's the first thing that you think that you need to do to start feeling healthier, to change your body composition, uh, to start getting energy back? Most people are going to go fitness, right? I need to go work out, right? I really got to work out again. I just haven't been working out, right? And I really got to get my body moving. I got I to work out. So now all of a sudden, there becomes this really huge, heavy focus on exercise. Mm. Ah, okay, 20, $25 billion a year. Okay, this is making sense. We could bring this focus. The second thing that comes very quickly is diet. I need to get on a diet. Listen, guys, get on a diet. I'm sorry to break this to you. You're already on a diet. Your diet is the, the food and drink that you have as an organism. That is the definition. You can go to Webster's, check it out. So you're already on a diet. Yet we feel that we have to get onto a diet. I need to go do paleo, keto. keto. Um, I need to do zone, right? I, Mediterranean. There was, there was a diet that we just, we had one of our clients ask like, oh, have you heard about the like Alamo diet? I'm like, what? And it was like, oh, yeah, this doctor who created this diet, and now it's her hometown. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Is this a thing? This is really happening. And so we have this pyramid of fitness, and then we go, okay, well, I got to get on a diet, right? And then I got to speed up these results because I want it now. So I'm going to start taking supplements, right? Over 6,000 supplement companies out there, majority of them are garbage, you know, nothing, it's not regulated. FDA looks at it and goes, okay, it's food. So that's how we're going to regulate it. But we're not going to tell you if you really need to put the exact dosage in there. So then people just go to the store and they start spending money on, on supplements. And that's the reason why there's 6,000 companies and growing because they're like, oh, you fool, you're going to pay me $75 for this powder that cost me 10 cents to make. Yes, I will take your money. Absolutely. And, you know, nobody's regulating me. So we'll make a little bit more profits by just putting 50% of what we actually say is in there. And then the last piece, and if you guys are listening, this is resonating with you. I'm not picking on you. I'm just, this is the root cause and what I'm recognizing. The last piece at the very tippy top is challenges. Everybody loves a good challenge, right? Yet here's the issue with challenges, guys. When you put a challenge out there, there's going to be a finish line. What happens with every race? You're going to go run a, a, a 10K? When you get done with 10K, what do you do? You stop. Oh, and then here comes the cycle all over again. The pyramid crumbles 
And now we're back to where we started because we painted a finish line. We put the wrong foundations and we ended up back where we were. And for some people it works for some people, but very short amount. And if we look at the percentages, it's not working. So Emily and I looked at it and said, there, there needs to be a different way. There has to be a different way. And so we came up with the proclivity pyramid and the proclivity pyramid is pretty much completely upside down of what the current health pyramid is. And that is our base. Our base is on language. Language. Wait a second. What do you mean, Joel, by language? Guys, the things that you say creates the reality you live in. The things you say creates the reality you live in. It also forms your identity. And so if we're saying things like, I can never lose weight, abracadabra, with our words we create, boom, you're not going to lose any weight. Now you may be thinking, oh, this is hocus pocus, blah, blah, foo-foo, juju stuff. I don't believe in that. Give me my supplements and my challenge and I'll, I'll show you different, Joel. Mm, well, let me tell you the science behind it. You have what's called your reticular activating system, which is connected to your hypothalamus. Now, God put this in our brain to protect us because what the reticular activating system does is it helps to create truth with what we are seeing or saying or doing. So back in the archaic days, we would look up at the sky and there would be a dark cloud and we would be away from our cave. All of a sudden, we would start tuning in. What's the sound of the birds? Are they, are they nestling down? What's the wind like? What's the humidity like? Is there more clouds on the horizon? Where's the sun at? This is your body's way of just being able to recognize, are we in innate danger? So it's creating truth or proof. And that's what your reticular activating system does. And guys, if you've ever bought a car, say you went to go get a red Toyota Corolla, what did you start seeing around town? A red Toyota Corolla. Oh my gosh, I didn't know my neighbor had a red Toyota Corolla. That's your reticular activating system. It starts seeking and searching. And so if we, our language and our identity is off, good luck, go ahead, try to exercise yourself out of it. You will end up back right where the base is, which is your identity, your true belief in yourself. Because you're going to think that you're an imposter the entire time you're exercising and eating correctly. Because you, what you're thinking to yourself is, uh, this is never going to work because I've just always been big boned. I'm just, I'm just a person that can't lose weight. I've never been athletic. It's always, it's only the people that have muscle and I can't put on muscle. Boom, boom, boom. You will come back to the identity every single time. So the base of our pyramid is being able to go, what is our language? What are we saying to ourselves? What's the future we're creating? What's the identity that you're getting rid of and the one you're creating? And so that's the first part. The second part of our pyramid is sleep. Sleep is the elixir of life, guys. If you are not sleeping, here's just a few numbers. You, have, you on average, a person who sleeps less than six hours consumes 300 calories more every day. Every day. Start extrapolating that out throughout an entire year. That's tens of thousands of additional calories. You have a 40% increase in sugar cravings ever been super like, ah, oh, I need all the cookies, all the chips, all the, after you've had a very little amount of sleep of night, night of sleep. Yes. I'm sure you guys are resonating with that right now. As you listen to yeah, dude, I do get a ton of cravings and here's some of the health uh, effects as well. 300% increase in heart disease, 300% increase in heart disease, right? 40% increase in cancer. We are, our cancer killing cells drop drastically. This is all with sleep. Again, this is something that makes no sense biologically that we are actually meant to sleep because us as humans, we get into this really deep sleep where you don't hear 
right? The dog going across the uh, floor where you don't hear the person coming in in the middle of the night. That's dangerous because it makes no sense. Yes, it's fine because we're in houses, right? We have more shelter and protection, but take yourself back when we had less protection. Man, that's easy, easy pickings for any type of predator to come out and snag your butt up. So that just shows how important it is to be able to get that sleep. And the way to get sleep is making sure that your day is structured. If you don't own your day, I promise you, someone else will. Someone else will come in and steal your time. Instagram, husband, wife, kids, um, boss, work, business. Just come in, just absolutely put you in a chokehold. And until you learn this little word with nothing else, you don't need to sugarcoat this word, you're going to struggle. And that word is no. That's it. You simply can tell someone, no. You don't have to give an explanation. You don't have to soften it up. You can just tell somebody, no. If you want to, you can say, no, thank you. Eh, that's being nice, right? And so being able to establish a sleep and structure is key. Then we move in on the next level for our pyramid is metabolic flexibility. Metabolic flexibility is your body's ability to tap into fat, the fat you already have, the 80,000 plus calories you already have on your body and use it as a very clean burning source of energy. Fat burns a lot cleaner than carbohydrates do. Go ahead and start getting your body into a metabolically flexible state where it burns fat. You're going to feel clear as day going throughout your entire, no energy drops. You're going to feel solid. Energy levels are going to be good. You're going to watch body fat fall off of you. That's why we talk about metabolic flexibility. And we do that by being able to establish appropriate nutrition and digestive habits. That's a key one, guys, digestive habits. The way you actually eat your food drastically, drastically changes the way your body absorbs the nutrients. And then our last piece, fitness, and more specifically, movement. Our body is meant to move every day. Go play, you guys. You want to get a great workout? Go play with your kids. Go call up your friends. I dare you. I don't care if you're, I don't care if you're 72 years old. Call one of your friends and be like, hey, you want to go play? Y yes, will you feel like a kid? Good. You want to feel like a kid. Go ahead and take a look at any child right now. They're smiling. They love their life. We should be more like a child. So making sure that we have daily movement, and that could be fitness, walking, hiking, weightlifting, cycling, playing, keeping that movement. And so we take people through this pro proclivity pyramid, and it, the results that we see are drastic drastic because guess what when they get done working with us they just keep going there's no finish line anymore they just go oh wait if i just keep walking i'll get to my destination yes you will instead of sprinting for five miles and then completely stopping and then walking backwards starting back at the starting line and then sprinting for five miles to get to the finish line and then walking backward i just steadily walked forward and i'm hundreds of miles away from you now so that was a that was that was the, the long explanation of the pyramid. I love it. Well, you know, just kind of recapping some of the things you're saying there is that it, it all starts with the decision. It all starts with the, the words choices that we're making. It starts with the mindset, the intentions that we're going into things with. And that's, you know, you mentioned that a lot of times people start with the fitness aspect. And that's a big thing. You know, if I'm working with a client who maybe is overweight, maybe they are inflamed, they're stressed, they're not sleeping well. And they're expecting me as a health coach to come in here and tell them about nutrition and exercise. But the first thing I usually say is, hey, let's stop exercising. And they kind of look at me like, what do you mean? And then my answer is, well, we need to focus on actually restoring energy because you're overexerting. Exercise inherently is a stressor on the body. and It's a hormetic stressor. 
which in the right dosage is one of the best forms of medicine human beings can ever experience. But on top of sleeping five hours a week, being addicted to caffeine, having stress in your relationships, you add exercise in there, you're just adding fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes what I'm telling my clients is you're actually going to stop exercise and go for a walk or do some Tai Chi. Like you said, movement, restorative yoga, but not the exerting movement, more of the working in, as we call it, bringing energy into us as opposed to exerting energy out. And then as we're mentioning nutrition as well, you're saying that's the second place people go to, you know, great intention, but are you doing it for a short term fix to lose that weight for the wedding and then just go back to your normal habits? Or are you looking to make a lifestyle change? Those are two different, very, two, very different intentions. Massive. Yeah. And then you're mentioning, the, you know, the supplementation. I'm a big fan of proper supplementation, but the, the challenge is that people are often using it as a quick fix to get out of a healthy lifestyle. And so, and like you said, there's also a ton of crappy companies out there that are just putting fillers. And, you know, when you test, I think it was like a big thing. I'm like, I'm not saying like 2016, I used to work at a juice bar and um, they're talking about, you know, we had a bunch of different fish oils coming in and, you know, you see that like, I think it was like 80% of the fish oils are not actually fish oil. It's just like a bunch of like random crap that they put in there. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it's like, all right, I try to preface because I'm a big, like I said, a big fan of using proper supplementation when appropriate, but I always preface, this isn't going to do anything for you. If you're not living a healthy lifestyle, if you're not sleeping, you're not moving properly, you're not thinking properly, you're not breathing properly. You can take the most expensive, best supplements in the world. And yeah, you may see a little something, but mm -hmm. we got to take care of the foundation first. And so supplements are the icing on the cake. They can take things, they can turn it up a, a few gears once you've done these other things first. So it's, it's a funny dynamic that we find ourselves in, but I love the, you know, I love that, that pyramid that you've created with the proclivity pyramid. And I really think that it is those, those word choices, those intentions that mm -hmm. absolutely make all the difference. Cause if you don't have those word choices, those intentions on the days, you don't feel like getting up and doing the thing to get you to the next step. You're probably not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't have that identity, right. Right. You see it as something else like, Oh, I got to check the box. The chore and list, the chore list instead of, Oh yeah. I move every day. There's a big difference. Oh, yeah. I got to get my 21, 15, nine thrusters and pull-ups or my uh, 40 mile bike ride in, in comparison to I move every day. Yep. I'm a person who moves every day. Now, my reticular activating system is seeking for options and opportunities to move. That may be a strength session that I have programmed for the day or hmm, time didn't permit it. I need more sleep. I wanted to make breakfast instead. Um, cool. I'm going to go on a walk. Why? Because I move every day. So I'm going to find the opportunities to move because I have the identity in which I have created with my words so that my brain works for me instead of against me and goes, Oh, cool. Let's find those, let's find those opportunities. You know, it, it's such a funny dynamic too, because, you know, for me, I started identifying as somebody who walks every single day and, mm. and, you know, cause for a while I found myself like, man, I get 6 PM and I haven't even walked today. And then I changed it. I walk every day before noon. So in the morning I'm walking now. And it's funny how that little shift now it's like, now it's noon. It's like, oh, cool. I've actually gone for two walks today yes. because it started that momentum off. And then that was a word choice that I, I slightly changed that yeah. has made such a big difference in my life. And like you're saying, it's like, you know, my, my strength training days are scheduled for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but I'm walking every day. Cause you, like you said, I move every single day, move every day, move every day, create that identity. And, and it becomes a very powerful tool uh, instead of checking the box. Definitely. And, you know, we can, we can dive down a whole rabbit hole, you know, again, working with clients and, you know, a lot of times when people get into this world of health and personal development, they're saying, oh, I got to meditate every day. I got to journal every day. I got to walk every day. I got to do all these things. And I'm like, pick two, pick two. Cause then it becomes, like you said, checking the boxes off. And I always smile when people, you know, start rattling off all the things they do. Cause it's like, cause I did, I used to do that all the time. I had my freaking list of oh, like yeah. 10 things. And then I smile. I was like, Oh yeah. I, I, I want to challenge you. Just pick two of those, stick to two of them. 
So it's, it's a funny dynamic, but you know, as soon as we start creating this chore list and a lot of times I find that it's like to chase an identity outside of ourselves. Like we haven't claimed that we are this person. It's like, Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know the proper way to describe it. like we're trying to become something that we're not without owning the fact that we want that for the right reasons and mm -hmm. i don't think i articulate that properly but i think you get what i'm what i'm diving at here oh man i, I totally get what you're diving in i mean I, i'm gonna speak for myself and, and rob feel free to to uh, you know agree or disagree with me on this yet when i started getting into the holistic field of recognizing like whoa wait a second you know, there's, there's a, there's a different way to do this. There's a different way to find help. I still was living in the same pyramid. <laughs> Just like you were saying, I was like, okay, cool. All right. Instead of fitness. Now, all of a sudden it's going to be ice baths and journaling and meditation and breath work. And all I did was just transfer one from the other. Yep. I just went like, and I still kept my fitness. Mm -hmm. So I just added more to the freaking pot, right? Instead of being able to say exactly what you said earlier. Wait, 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 how am I going to bring energy in? What can I do less mm -hmm. of? You know, one of the things I tell uh, all my hard charging clients, right? The, the CEO, vice president kind of guys. One of my very first things I say to them, I was like, I want you to ruthlessly eliminate hurry and busyness out of your life. Ruthless. I want you to be ruthless with it. No, not soft. I mean, pull out your sword, start freaking hacking because that is one way to be able to start creating space for your change. If you think that you're just going to add in more, what you're going to do is you're going to put yourself in a situation where you're going to feel like you're not working hard enough. If I just worked harder, I just need to get all my workouts in. I just need to get, I just, I just need to find more time man now what identity are you creating that of a failure right that of one who doesn't succeed Whew, now we start getting ourselves in the wrong place and then we want to run away from that identity because it doesn't make us feel good so then we run back to the things that give us comfort food right alcohol right uh, not exercising not stressing our body in, in a hormetic way and we go back to the cycle i mean it's I've, I've been there you know I, I, one word you just said there's word busy and that is a word i've completely eliminated to the best of my ability sometimes it still comes up but yes. just eliminating the word busy from my vocabulary said it's me oh how things go oh I'm busy you know it's just like this like it's like this negative connotation of like yes. i love what i do but as soon as people ask you know how things go oh i've been busy it's like, it's like, it's almost like taking the victim role to some degree. It's like, Big you know, time. feel bad for me. Like it, it's been so tough. I've been so busy. And then yeah. from my perspective, like I say, and it kind of like my energy drains. Like as soon as I say, yeah. like, I feel the shift and it's like, I don't want to be talking about my business is busy because I mm. love what I do. And as soon as I say busy, I almost start to have like a little distaste for what I do. Cause like, oh man, am I that busy? Like, do I really want to be doing like the, those little thoughts that come off the word busy mm -hmm. they're not fun words they're not fun words i'm so glad you bring that because I, I resonate with that huge you know i i i heard a, a pastor say this that busy stands for buried under satan's yoke oh, i've never heard that but i like that. satan's <laughs> yoke right and whether you're religious or not and you're listening right now think about it if we if we put this in the context of of God, right? Uh, you know, what does the devil want to do? He wants to distract you from the goodness of God. So he wants to bury you. He wants to get you away, confused, diverted. And that is what, whether you want to say devil or imposter, buried under Satan's yoke, if I can keep you busy, you won't be focused on your wife. Right. If I can keep you busy, you won't invest into your kids, right? If I can keep you busy, right? You won't invest into yourself. Now I have you where I want you right. because now you're going to feel, you're, you're going to feel like a bad dad, a bad husband, and you're going to feel out of shape. Now I have you pinned, got you where I want you, right? So words are, as we've talked about, words are important. 
Yeah. And, you know, to just kind of further that point, it's also when we're in that state of business, we're not present because we're so focused on the next thing we got to do. We're not celebrating yeah. accomplishments because we're so focused on all oh, that was cool, but I got to do this thing next. And I remember uh, I was chatting with uh, one of my friends, Anastasia Girali. She's been on my podcast a couple of times. She says with a client, she always ABC, always be celebrating. It takes mm. the busyness out of that. I love that. And that's something, you know, because a lot of times as a type A type of person, which is an identity that I sometimes put myself in the box of because that's a common thing that helps people, you know, kind of figure out you know, what yeah. type of personality and I, well, that, that's also something I'm trying to not to identify as anymore, but mm. as somebody who fits into that mold, one would say in the general, just to kind of give an idea, that's always the next thing. It's let me accomplish, let me do, do, do. So that's an identity I'm looking to let go of and focus more on the ABC, always be celebrating. Not focus on the business, focus on the presence, focus on the mindfulness. And you said earlier about finding time by simply stopping the word I'm busy. Yeah, I've created so much more time because I'm not in this tizzy of I got to go like my brain is just on this, you know, sympathetic mm -hmm. nervous system hamster wheel. Oh, it's it creates that space. And it's like, so maybe the key to creating more time and finding more time is just stop saying I'm busy. Maybe we just create a a billion dollar industry right there. <laughs> that, that, I'm telling you, Rob, that is why we start with language, right? Because right. guess what, guys, you say busy, your brain will start seeking truth to busyness. It will go, oh, you are busy. Oh, look at how you have to rush from here to there. Oh, look at how you don't have any time to be able to finish up that one project that actually doesn't matter because it's actually not going to make you any money for your business. But you feel like you need to do it. Why do you feel like you need to do it? And I'm talking really fast because I'm making sure that you guys are getting the point that I'm busy, 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 busy. Wait a second. Stop. Don't answer the email. Don't answer it. Right. See what happens. Right. Don't get the project done. See what happens. Start focusing on the things that truly matter, that really are going to move the needle in your health and your relationships and your work and ask yourself, is this going to enhance my life? Yes or no? If it's not a hell yes, get rid of it. If this isn't, this is going to enhance my life. This will enhance my work. This will enhance my relationship. It's a no. Kill the distraction. Focus in on where you're trying to be and point your mindset to it. You know, I, th I think uh, something a lot of people will be able to relate to here is uh, road rage. You know, in, the, in the past, you know, I'm, people, people would say, you know, you're, you're the dude who's freaking meditating all day, the most calm person I know until you drive. And then you're freaking weaving in and out of people, you know, going real fast, just like, and it was this realization. I was like, huh, what's going on there? What is it in my brain that I think I need to get from destination A to B as quickly as possible? Right. And what is that worth? What is saving those two minutes on my 17 minute drive really worth? Mm. Probably a whole lot of stress, probably some inflammation in my body, probably some, some four letter words that are coming out of my mouth, probably some bad energy going out into the world, probably a lot of things to save yeah. two minutes. And so a big intention of mine is I'm going to give myself more time. I'm not going to leave right the last second. If I got to be there, I'm going to aim to be there 10 minutes early. So I don't have to rush. And I'm also, if traffic comes, Hey, it's traffic. I can't do anything about it. No point right. getting pissed off. But it, I, I think that the road rage, I, I see a lot of people transform behind that wheel because I was one of those people. And it's uh, not always the, the most fun person to be driving with. Oh, yes. And, and you know, and that goes, uh, that comes back to that structure again. Like so many people think, all right, I can get from here to here in 15 minutes. Oh, for sure. If there wasn't a single car on the road and you hit all the or a light lights, or a stop sign or <laughs> what, you know, like, why don't you double that amount of time and say, I'm going to leave 30 minutes. If I know it's going to take 15 minutes, if I was in full green lights, I'm going to take 30 or shoot, maybe even take 40 because now you're giving yourself space to, I don't know, somebody's, somebody is on the side of the road, needs help with their tire. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, well, I still have another 40 minutes before I need to be anywhere. Why don't I pull over and check them out, right? Maybe, maybe you can have a conversation when you get to your destination with somebody who needs it. Yet, when we're thinking, I just want to save my time because I'm so busy, because I, 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 
I see what's going on here. I see what's going on here. Fun game. You know, we, we can da- keep diving down these rabbit holes all day. That's what I think is so fun about the, the language game uh, yeah, that, we're, that sure. we're playing here. It's, it's, it's endless because every mm-hmm. time I change a piece of my language, it reveals to me another piece. It's like, oh, man, you, you just it's like whack-a-mole. Like I yeah, whack yeah, one and right. like, look, it's like, oh, shit, there's three more over there. Like, yeah, that's right. More. It's, it's, that's right. You know, the fun game. But, you know, I want to kind of just dive into some of the things we we're talking about, you know, hormetic stressors talking about exercise you brought up ice baths cold therapy and we were chatting a little bit about things like that before um and i think when i think of you know hormetic stressors i think of exercise i think of fasting i think of ice baths i think of sauna you know a lot of these different things i'd love to just dive into fasting because we were talking about a little bit uh before we started the show up um we'd just love to hear um because you were saying some cool things that you do with fasting i'd love to kind of hear the philosophy of what you're doing why you're doing and the results that you see yeah, for sure. For sure. So, you know, I came from the CrossFit world and with the CrossFit world, it's like eat five times a day, you know, time your carbohydrates around your workouts, all things that are, are appropriate to say for a competitive athlete. Yet, if you're not a competitive athlete, this can actually put you in a position where uh, you're going to have the uh, digestive um, stress um, you're eating more carbohydrates and you actually your body really needs, you have a ton of fluctuation up and down because now you're surviving on 250 or 300 c- carbohydrates a day. Um, I, I know many, many athletes who hit 300 carbohydrates a day. And I'm just like, dude, that would take me five days to hit that many carbohydrates. <laughs> and my point is, is that I went from eating five days going like, wait, wait a second. I don't need to do this. I'm gonna eat three times right? And they're gonna be five to six hours apart. And I'm gonna have to start making sure that every single meal, I have vegetables, and or fruit, every single meal, doesn't matter. So I started doing that. And this naturally started getting me more into uh, metabolic flexibility, where now all of a sudden, I didn't have those like cravings, like every two to three hours feeling like I need to eat. I was extending them for me four or five, six hours. And I was a lot more clear in my mind you know, like, and I started losing weight, started feeling good. I started recovering. I'm like, wow, this is, this is cool. And then I, then I got uh, into intermittent fasting and then I started eating two meals a day. I'm like, wow, man, I'm actually saving time. Talk about structure, right? Now I'm saving time to be able to invest into more myself or my business or my relationships. Cool. Then I came up last year, third quarter of uh, my brother and I going like, well, let's do a fast. And I had done some 24 hour fast, right? And he's like, let's do a 72 hour fast. Let's do three days. Okay. So then I ended up doing a three day fast and I went through this three day fast, man. I just, the, the first after the 24 hours, the 48 hours tough, right? Um, I can start disrupting your sleep just a little bit, you know, definitely dependent on whether you're getting the appropriate amount of uh, potassium, magnesium, and sodium it can disrupt a little bit. You can have these hunger cues. Yet after 72 hours, I felt really good. My hunger cues went away, I was sleeping good. You know, I almost wanted to be like, man, I want to keep going. I want to go, why not more? And I'll tell you the first time that I, that I had a bowel movement, man, talk about a flush. I mean, it was dark. It was, it was the stuff that was stuck on my intestines for the longest time that got out. I mean, I felt fresh, light, uh, recovered, and I was getting a lot of slack from my, my CrossFit, you know, folks. I thought, oh, I couldn't do that. My performance, there's no way. And I was like, hmm really okay so at the end of my 72 hour fast i went to a a buddy's gym and i said okay let's test my performance hadn't touched a bar in well over a year and a half you know COVID came left the gym started my own business and just started doing dumbbell workouts at home and i ended up getting up to a 405 deadlift and my max before that was uh 415 you know like two years before so i was well over my 90 percent at 4.05 on a three-day fast, you know? 
And so when it comes to like performance, when it comes to recovery, when it comes to cell generation, uh, regeneration, fasting is just hands down something that all humans should be doing. And after I did that 72 hour fast, then I started going to OMAD, right? One meal a day. So then I started doing one meal a day. And I did that for about three months until I started recognizing just like you're talking about that it would stress my body too much. I was starting to have lower and lower amounts of energy. Still would feel good in the morning, but I'd find myself getting more tired in the evenings. And so then I started going back to two meals a day, uh, four days a week, and uh, two days of uh, uh, 24 hour fast. And so that's where I'm currently at is doing those, those days, basically, the days I do my strength training, I'll do, I'll do uh, two days, or two meals a day. And then there it is 24 hours. And it's been incredible. It's I, I, again, I tell people, you want to become superhuman, start learning how to fast, get metabolically flexible. Because then days that come by where you're like, dang, I'm flying, or this is going on. Cool. You just don't have to eat. And you'll be perfectly fine. Just drink right. your water, you're going to be great. Well, I think that the term metabolic flexibility is, is the key term here is that again, we want to be adaptable. And, and that's yeah. really, I think the key point here is, now, I find that my fasting window tends to change with the seasons. In the summer, I often will do a 16 hour fast every single day. In the winter time here, it's freaking nine degrees in Boston as we're recording this right now. I, I find that I need to eat more. I need to eat three meals a day, but at least once a week, I'll do a 16 hour fast. So now instead of fasting nearly every day for you know the intermittent fast that we're talking about, mm -hmm. that goes on to being a little bit less. And like you're mm -hmm. saying about sometimes I notice that shift is a little bit more of a stress in my body in mm -hmm. the fall as the seasons are changing. And part of that is just becoming in tune with the, the system and saying, Hey, this is what the system needs. And as we were talking about before, and I'm doing a extended fast right now, I'm only about 18 hours in, but I'm planning to go for, you know, at least 36 hours, which is more than I usually do in the winter. Nice. So, so I'm going to continue that fast and you know, see that feels. And maybe I get to 36 hours and maybe say, Hey, and go for 48, but just listen to the body and be yeah. open to that. But you know, like yeah. you're saying is get comfortable with the fasting. Cause that's a big thing. Like, especially you're saying on uh, airplanes, I notice anytime I go on an airplane for a long, like I'm talking cross country, but not like a little two hour flight, but like, you know, six yeah. plus hour flight. If I'm eating, I usually land and my digestive system feels a little off. Cause it's like this change in elevation this change in air pressure. Like there's a lot of yeah. stress going on the body. That's not a digestive state to be in. That's the sympathetic nervous system. We're not in that rest and digest mm -hmm. state while we're traveling on an airplane. So for me, if I fast while I'm on a plane or maybe one meal in the morning, but don't eat over the time that I'm on the plane, like in between the flights on a layover or anything like that, my digestive system usually feels a lot better when I land. Mm -hmm. And that's because of that metabolic flexibility. We're able to handle going eight hours in the middle of the day without eating, 10 hours in the middle of the day without eating. Mm -hmm. And when the time comes to eat, cool, feeling nourished, feeling good. 100%. It's, a, it's an ever evolving game. And that's what I think, you know, fasting has become such a, a popular practice nowadays, which is great. Uh, but mm -hmm. I do think it's important for people to know is like, hey, play around with different options. Just because somebody says intermittent fasting every day is the best thing. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. for a bit. Just because somebody says, oh, you should only eat in a four hour window. Maybe. So play around with it because <laughs> all these different options, you know, and like you're saying quarterly. Maybe you want to do a three-day fast every quarter. Maybe that's what works for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to do a three-day fast every month. Maybe that works for you. Yep. All depends. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. And you're you're your own scientist, you know? Yes. You don't need a scientific study to tell you what works for your body. You are your scientific study. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. But yeah, man, it's uh, it's a fun game to uh, to really just be diving into this. And that's something you know, I like to use myself as my own human guinea pig. And, and whether that is with exercise, with fasting, with supplementation, with sleep, whatever it is. You know, that's, I was wearing my aura ring for a while. Um, I tend to cycle on and off it. I don't like to become too dependent on it. Uh, mm -hmm. But like I wore it for about two months straight um, in November and December. Stopped wearing it at the end of December. 
it's cool to gather that data big like, oh so what if i do this before bed how does that affect my sleep score oh what if i do yeah. that before bed how does that affect my sleep score yes. and just and just being my own guinea pig and then it becomes this game of okay so when i do this this is best and then i know hey my girlfriend just made some bomb almond flour cookies but it's 9 p.m yeah it's probably gonna affect my sleep score do i want to take that is that worth it and sometimes yeah. the answer is yes because they're smelling so good and it's like hey i'm just and like you're saying being like a yeah. kid i'm just gonna be a little kid have my raw yeah. milk have my cookies that's yeah. late at night it might affect my sleep a little bit but hey i got a little flexibility in there so that's right that's <laughs> right that's right i love it man i love it yes yes so I want to uh, transition a little bit here to something um, that, we, again, we were talking about before that's been uh, fresh on your mind, and that's um, mm. awareness, self-awareness, mm. push and pull. I want to just have you riff on that for a minute. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was with a, a, a buddy this morning, and we were, we were diving into um, – different things about him being a dad and he has two different sons or five years apart and he you know he's questioning like you know am i doing this right you know am i treating my my 10 year old the same as my 15 year old and they're so dynamically different and you know i just want to i just want to do it right and you know and i and i want to be a good husband and and we were diving into this and and, and as of recent i've really started uh that there's actually a book called awareness, a really good read. Um, if, if you're willing to get into the, the depths, right. Start letting go of some things. And the, what this book is talking about is bring, being able to bring awareness to yourself, who you think that you are and actually letting that go, letting it go in terms of Am I a good, good man? Am I a good husband? Am I a good dad? What, what defines good dad? What defines a good man? What defines a good diet, right? Because if we think that, oh, if I do all of these things correctly, I'm a good man. So then what happens when you don't? Oh, you're a bad man now? You're still the same man. You're still the same woman. And I was talking to him about how we want to invite our doubts, insecurities, angers, frustrations in. We want to pull them in. We don't want to press them away. And a lot of people, when that comes, they start pressing away. Oh, no. Oh, gosh, I really don't want to feel insecure. There has to be a way out of this. Or be aware and invite it in, right? Because if I get it, my fears, if I tell my fears, no, 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 come in. Sit with me. What's your name? What, what do you do? Uh, c- come here, come here. And I get them close enough because I'm not pushing them away anymore. I get them close enough that I have my arm around them. Guess what? They just became my ally. Because you guys, your doubts, your fears, your insecurities, they are you. And when you're trying to resist yourself, you're going to have inner turmoil, anxiety, depression. These things are going to come up. And you're going to, we're going to cause this because we're causing this turmoil, this pressure, instead of inviting it in, right? It's not that you are depressed. It's that you feel depression, right? It's not that, oh man, I'm full of doubt. It's that you feel doubt. So invite doubt in. Come here, doubt. Let me, let's sit down for a sec. And being able to get to this point of, yes, creating identities. And when you get to the point of being able to recognize different identities, the next level is being able to let all those identities go. All of them. Coach, right? Uh, husband, wife, son, daughter. You start letting that go and you're, now you're able to allow things to flow completely through you. There's no more stopping it. It's just being able to allow it to come come and go right like a bird on a telephone wire and that is what meditation is about mm. right that is what awareness is about allow it to flow instead of right pressure pushes right and patience pulls and when we're patient with ourselves we pull things into us and a, a tugboat 
can't do a damn thing to a massive uh, cruise liner if it's trying to push it. Mm. But if there's a rope and it pulls, it does its job. Teeny little tugboat does its job. Go ahead and try to push a string. Useless. Pull a string. Mm. Extremely powerful. So pull those things in. Don't resist. Don't, don't, don't create the pressure. Don't slam the door, right? Because they're just going to keep knocking. Instead, say, hmm, come on in. 100%. And you'll find it immediately, they have no more power because right. they're actually part of you. And you're like, oh, I can love this part of me too. Right. And that comes back to the stories we're telling. That comes back to the word choice that we're using. That's what right. you're saying is like, if we identify as somebody with anxiety, mm-hmm. like you said, you're, you're experiencing anxiety in this moment. Why? You know, what about this is making you uncomfortable? And then let's dive into that again. Then we can keep diving into the next layer of that. Why? Mm. Keep asking why. And then usually it's something that maybe it's because we haven't done it before. Like a lot of people say one of the worst fears is public speaking. Why? Mm. Most people have not practiced public speaking. They have an image in their head, a story of probably what could go wrong. They have a story of I'm not a speaker. All these stories that they say Mm. aloud. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for me, when I first started making content videos, I remember, like, I look back at these now from five, six years ago. My, like, I leave them up on my YouTube channel for that reason, for people to be like, hey, they're like, oh, you know, you're just good at making videos. You're, you can just talk to a camera. No, look at how bad I was five or six years ago. <laughs> I can't even watch them. I, I, I have to mute it, turn it off. Like, I cringe. It's like, oh, my, like, it's brutal. Oh, man, I can't wait to watch, dude. (laughs) Now (laughs) you do hook, line, and sinker. You got me. I can't wait to go check it out. Full Health Connections YouTube channel. Check it out. Go all the way back. Sort. Go Um, into videos. Sort by latest, oldest published, however that works. Go to the bottom. I was doing with one of my buddies. It's it's brutal to listen to. So check that out. But point being is, you know, this comes down to the root cause, kind of coming full circle with how this conversation started. And that's a big challenge we have in our current medical system is that we're focused on band-aid approach, covering up the symptoms, not getting to the root cause, Mm. cover up the pain. You know, Paul Check, one of my mentors always says the pain teacher is one of the greatest teachers we can have. Yes. And that's where, you know, a lot of people in this field of health, for me, my health journey started because I had my second bad concussion. That's why I got interested in health because I couldn't do, I was a swimmer. I identified as a swimmer, identified as a lacrosse player. I couldn't do physical activities. I had to get Mm. into yoga. I had to get into meditation. I had to get in psychology, figure out what the hell is going on in my brain here. Because doctors were giving me patches. They were giving me pills. They're giving these things to cover up the symptoms. And so the pain teacher, like you said, bring it in. Hey, buddy. Hey, pain teacher. Yeah. You want to tell me right now, not not push it away, not suppress it. Mm -hmm. Then that comes back to get into the root cause. And I, I, I think that that's, you know, coming back to... The pyramid, the two pyramids that you outlined in the beginning, that's where it stems. We got to get to that root cause and we need to be very mindful with our word choice to not say, you know, I have chronic pain. I'm experiencing pain right now. Mm -hmm. I'm an anxious person. I'm experiencing anxiety right now. Mm -hmm. Very different things. And that comes, you got to be open to being uncomfortable, feeling that little bit of stress, a little bit of discomfort and diving into it. Bring it in. I like that. Pull it in. Don't push it away. Bring it in. Bring it in. And you made a great point of like, guys, listen to this. Like what Rob was saying was there's, there's two phrases that I use. Acknowledge the conflict. What's the conflict? Acknowledge it, right? So perfect example, one of my clients, uh, my knee, my knee, my knee burns when I exercise. Okay, we acknowledge the conflict. Why? Why is it burning? And let's be specific, right? What does burning mean? There's a cigarette on your knee. What, what movement causes it? How long does it last, right? It, it's, like, it's like when people say, ah, I got a bad back. You, you have a bad right. back. Did it <laughs> cheat on you? Right. Did it steal your money, right? When people just globally say, I have a bad back, they're not going to find the answer. Right. Yet when we're able to say, hey, when I lunge forward with my right knee and when I press back, I feel a little bit of pain right underneath my patella and it stays inflamed for the next couple of days where it's achy when I step upstairs. Now we're getting specific, 
right? My, ba my back's not bad. You know, down at my SI joint on my right side, when I twist to the left, I really feel it. And I notice that it flares up when I'm doing overhead. Oh, show me your overhead again. Oh, your overhead's terrible. So you're overextending and putting pressure on that SI joint. Cool, let's work on your lats. So something that would start off as I have a bad back is actually because your overhead is, is terrible. And if you're putting up boxes all day long for work and you're overextending, you're firing up your back. Yet if you just go around saying my back is bad, we're not going to get to the, the, the root, the root cause. So again, coming back to it and being able to go, what's the root cause? What are our words? How are we using our words for us instead of against us? And then when I do find out that's my right side SI joint, when I go overhead, guess what I can say? Joel, when you're putting this box overhead, core tight, core tight, reach, don't go over extension. I literally will speak to myself like that. And I have my athletes do the same thing. And guess what? No overextension, no pain in the back. No more bad back. It didn't steal money from you. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, just to kind of close up that point as well is a lot of times that the symptoms are not actually what's causing the issue either. You know, right. for me, I, I tend to find I'll hold tension at times in my traps. But mm -hmm. as soon as I stretch my lats and my triceps, I can massage my neck all day. And maybe that lasts for a few minutes. But when I massage my lats and I massage my triceps, the neck starts to release itself too. So, and like you're saying with the back, maybe it's the lats, maybe it's yeah. the shoulders, maybe it's your, your hips are splayed forward or yeah. tilted back million and one different reasons, but it comes down to, we got to be open to checking out the root cause. And it starts with that base level of our language. Excellent. So Excellent. Joel, this has been a lot of fun, man. This has been great. I'm, I'm really excited for people to, have the chance to listen to this. And, um, you know, it's been a great pleasure talking with you again. And uh, I just want to give people the opportunity. Where can they connect with you? Where can they get involved with what you do? Totally, totally. Um, if you guys want to check out what we do at Proclivity, head over to www.proclivity.co. You can check out the Proclivity Method. That's our staple program where we take people through 12 weeks and we focus on that exact pyramid. And we walk you through it. We get a metabolically flexible body where at the end of the program, guess what? Yes, we go on it. We go on a fast and people do it and they recognize, holy crap, I can still survive after 24 hours of no food and feel great about it. And we help you change the language. And when you change the language, you change your life. Um, so check it, check us out. You can get a free clarity call with Emily and I, 45 minutes, super, super high quality call whether you end up doing the program or not, you're going to leave with something. Um, you can also follow us on our Instagram page, proclivity.co. Uh, you can follow me at Joel Cochran underscore. Uh, and we're doing a workshop at the uh, next week on the 19th, setting goals. Um, if, you, if you can't make it, there's going to be a recording. Uh, you, can, you can click the link that, is, uh, that I actually sent to you. Um, and you can see the recording. It's going to be awesome. Or you can join in. Uh, that's just dependent on whenever this is going to air. So uh, that's how you guys can reach me. Love it, brother. And just walk me through the program. Is this pre-recorded? Is this a group coaching? Is this one-on-one -on -one coaching? What does that look like for people? Yeah, it's totally. It's a, it's a group setting where uh, we meet up once a week via Zoom. We also lever um, a platform called True Coach. And this is where we put all of your, your workouts your nutrition, your modules. So there's videos from Emily and I, there's workouts in there. It's a full deal package. I mean, we go fully in with that pyramid of, of movement, of metabolic flexibility, of sleep. It is, uh, it's an incredible program that, that Emily and I are very passionate about. And uh, we would love to talk to you guys about it if it's something that you're interested in. Love it, brother. Well, man, it's been great chatting with you and I appreciate you being here and um, everybody listening. I will put all those links in the description box as well. So if you didn't catch those, don't worry about it. They will be in the description box. Check those out. Follow Joel. Check out his program. He's got the call on the 19th. Um, so Joel, thank you for being here, my friend. Appreciate you. Brother, I had such such a great time. I'm looking forward to uh, you and I getting a little conversation together and in, in the Proclivity podcast as well. It's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Keeping it going. All right, my friends. Right. Have an awesome day. We'll see you soon. See you guys.
Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast with my guest, Joel Cochran. So, like I mentioned, check out all the links I have in the description box here. Connect with Joel. Check out his program. Follow him on Instagram. He's, he's a cool dude. As you've seen, he's a really, really well-versed speaker, really well-versed coach. He gets a lot of results for his clients, and it's been a great pleasure to be able to have this conversation with him and connect with him off camera, um, not on this live podcast, but have a chance to get to know him a little bit more has been really, really great pleasure. So I really want to encourage you to check that out. Check out the different sponsors we have for this podcast in the description box as well. And really want to encourage you to subscribe on the YouTube channel, depending on which uh, platform you are listening or watching this on. Uh, YouTube is going to be a really big platform for me in the year 2022. New videos are dropping every single Thursday, and these podcasts drop there first Mondays at 10 a.m., so 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time will be the first place to see the live premiere of the podcast. And you'll also be able to see that in video where other platforms will also be in audio. So if you want to see what our beautiful faces look like, you know, subscribe to the channel. Watch the podcast on YouTube every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and look out for new videos every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, That is Whole Health Connections for the YouTube channel. Check it out. Hit the subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please do like and share with a friend if you enjoyed this episode and you think it can benefit. And until next time, have the best day ever, and I'll talk to you soon.